<sighs> it's good to be back. I took a month out of my life to play every Pop Tropica Island and ended up enjoying it as much as all of you. So it kind of felt wrong to end it there when Pop Tropica had some more content you might remember. Today we're looking at mini quests, and if that doesn't sound familiar, then does legendary swords ring a bell? Yep, that's right, we're doing this. Compared to the first video, this is like a mini list, so it works out great that today we are ranking every Pop Tropica mini quest. I'm gonna play each of the ones available on Flashpoint currently, but I have to warn you that a few of these only have a little information on them. Our list of mini quests are Haunted House, Dr. Hare's Secret Lab, Earth Day, Don't Be an Energy Hog, Dr. Hare's Revenge, Legendary Swords, Blimp Adventure, Round Em Up, Prepare for Impact, Shrink Shot, DC Diner, Finding Nessie, Money Ladder, Spook Central, and Nanobot Combat Training. Finally, although these aren't really mini quests, the wiki lists them as such, so I'm going to include them. Pop Tropica Realms, Pop Tropica Adventures, and Pop Tropica Forgotten Islands will be a little extra something something for all of you. Without further ado, let's find out if these mini quests are truly legendary, or if we should have stopped before things got scary. N neat son? I really missed you, buddy. It's so good to be reunited again. <sighs> At first, I wasn't sure if I had played any of these before. I recognized the Earth Day one immediately, but it wasn't until I had to hunt down this stupid bat before it all came back to me. This level feels like classic Pop Tropica, but there are a few changes. All the items you collect are at the bottom of the screen. No need for some stupid backpack, we're going real classic point and click now. The rooms seem to reset themselves every time you leave them, although that could be Flashpoint's fault. Either way, riding around on this broom feels amazing, I love it. Anyways, I have no need for kerosene. All you have to do is collect 4 items by completing a couple puzzles, then bring them to the gravestone to discover a spooky Halloween party. I look freaking awesome now! Honestly, other than being pretty short, this felt just like the glory days. I'm super excited now. I don't know what to expect about the others, but I certainly enjoyed myself here. S tier. The next level is a little trip back to Dr. Hare's lab. Sadly, it's a glorified stealth mission where you collect three keycards without getting caught. Guess who got caught and had to do it all over again? At least in the end, I get this cool rabbit hat. I don't know, it was fine. Dr. Hare literally did not show up, so it could have been anyone's lab, really. I was kind of hoping for a cool boss fight or something, so this is pretty sad in comparison. I'm giving it a C tier. I only remember the Earth Day quest because of its obnoxious name, Don't Be an Energy Hog. Well, we'll just see about that. Oh! Is that a freaking energy hog? Trust me, I do not want to be one of those. You've convinced me already. I think this thing rivals the Jersey Devil. Let's get away from it. Oh, it's on my instructions too? Basically, you just go around the house turning off every appliance. The thing is, after these 60 seconds are up, this hog family is just going to turn the energy back on. You are a family of hogs! Anyways, this is a decent way to help kids learn to conserve energy, but stuff like turning off the lights in the tiny prisons where they put their pets is a little much, don't you think? Whatever, this is a glorified minigame, which I'm sad to say I think most of these will end up being. Let's put on our recycling shirt and get away from this hog! B tier. So Dr. Hare's Revenge is only available on Pop Tropical Worlds, which is no longer available. Looking at some gameplay on YouTube, it appears to be a series of levels where you collect all the carrots before time runs out. Not a lot of islands took full advantage of the platforming mechanics, and probably for a good reason as they can be a bit janky and frustrating. Still, this thing appears to have had a lot of levels, so it was much more in-depth than stuff like the Energy Hog minigame. More content does not always equate to a better experience, but I definitely find this to be more entertaining than the Dr. Hare's Secret Lab mini quest. I'm gonna put it in B. It definitely does not look like an A tier experience. This is what we've been waiting for, people! If you have been hoping for something more in-depth, then you've come to the right place. This starts with a cutscene, which is more elaborate than some of the island's introductions. We cruise past all the astronauts' planets until we reach a strange new one, where animals seem to be running away from something. Inside a cave, we find our first sword. Our first legendary sword, even. I can't wait to use this thing, I just... Uh... How do I use it? Maybe these evil robot bats can help. No, they're not helping at all! <laughs> Anyways, long story short, Flash limits your controls sometimes, so I hacked into the mainframe, and now Neat Sun is looking a little bloodthirsty. Just look at the little guy go. Now let's go demolish those stupid little bats for thinking they're better than me. Take that! Take it! <laughs> Pretty early on, I discovered the ultimate trick to never getting hit. Spam the spacebar. Don't hold it, don't even jump around, just sit there and spam. I'm used to playing most games that way anyway, so we're all good here. From there, you just continue fighting hordes of robots until our first boss fight. 
The bosses are kind of BS in this game, I spent most of my time just fighting them again and again. It's impossible to learn their attack patterns because the game is super unresponsive. You can't just hit and run away. For all of you who played Pop Tropica, you know that moving can be extremely slow and frustrating. Anyways, we get a new sword! It's a lightning sword, so big boss? I'm about to light up your world like nobody else. The way that you flip your hair really does make me overwhelmed though. Even the way you smile at the ground, it isn't hard to tell that you don't know. You just don't know you're beautiful! Anyways, we, we murder him. We talk to Evile, the mysterious guy who seems bad to me for some reason? Then we get back to our ship and head to... The end? What? I only got two swords, I was ready for this big adventure and now it's over? Here are my criticisms. At least give us three swords. They make this huge deal about a menu with our swords and there's freaking two. Don't show this Evile guy and not have him be the final boss. What gives? I'd have to imagine this was going to be its own island or something, or even its own game, but it's got scrapped and they just release it like this instead. Combat kind of doesn't work in this game. It was okay at some parts, but mostly frustrating. Still, the world was cool, the levels were fun to traverse, and there were a good amount of bosses. I really did enjoy the parts where I ran through an area killing the little enemies while platforming. But this feels unfinished. It's lacking. I was ready to put this one in S, but sadly it must live in A tier. Blimp Adventure reminds me a lot of the final boss from Red Dragon Island, where you put out fires on houses while trying not to get hit. The gameplay is pretty boring, and the final fight is frustrating and boring, but what makes me happy are the interactions between Neat Sun and Dr. Cumulo Nimbus. <laughs> Neat Sun thinks he's super awesome and heroic, but just ends up looking lame. What is this? Someone dares challenge the might of Cumulo? I come to defend the islands and thwart your evil schemes. You got lucky that time. Let's see how you fare against my lightning mines. Your weapons are no match for my flying skills. Arr, you are a worthy opponent indeed. I will chase you to the ends of Bob Tropica if I have to. All right, hero, no more games. Already? <laughs> I was just getting warmed up. What the fuck? <laughs> Anyways, this one's fine, B tier. So, the next few I'm pretty sure are just demos for the islands they are promoting. Round em up was made for Wild West Island, but the entire minigame is just lassoing three cows and then winning. Now that the island exists, I can do this minigame pretty much whenever I want, so this is unnecessary. <sighs> D tier. With the title like Prepare for Impact, I'm ready for some intense stuff. Oh, is that you, Neat Sun? You look... different. New haircut? The thing I love about this one is just seeing the random fat NPCs I have to sumo wrestle. Each one is more hilarious than the last somehow. The gameplay is just quick draw, whoever clicks first wins. However, you can actually rank up in this one, so that's cool. What's weird is the gameplay for sumo wrestling in the actual island is pretty fun, so I don't get why we got a downgrade here. I really do appreciate the ranking up idea because otherwise this would be a 20 second minigame. I actually played this for a bit to get all the cosmetics from it, but it wasn't that fun and they don't look that cool. Still better than the last one. B tier. Okay, so Shrink Shot actually looks crazy fun, but... But I can't play it! It's not on Flashpoint, I'm so freaking sad. You get to bounce all around the room and collect points, going for high scores and stuff. This is an actual minigame and I don't even get to play it. So sad. I know it's weird that this is going to go in the same tier as Legendary Swords, but it does look fun, so it's got to. DC Diner is on Flashpoint, so let's go! Ever wanted to play Papa's Burgeria, but in Pop Tropica? Then boy do I have a mini quest for you. For some reason this restaurant minigame has like the most epic music ever, listen to this thing. It does get harder as you go, and there are some upgrades you can get too, but there's like 6 menu items in total, so there's little to no challenge here. I like it, but it's no better than B tier. Which is what I was gonna say, but I kinda got addicted to this one. It got to me. There's something so enjoyable about pouring Mark Twain his orange Fanta. I eat this stuff up. Just like these customers are gonna eat my yummy, yummy pies. 
Just like these customers are gonna eat up my yummy, yummy pies. Just like these customers are gonna eat up my yummy, yummy my tummy pies. A tier. So I was warned before going into this one that it sucked. <laughs> I think I'll be the judge of that. Let's see, we gotta find Nessie here. Huh, this is kinda hard. I guess I'm gonna run out of time. I'll just try again and uh... Try again tomorrow? What is this, Animal Crossing? Let me freaking try now! So I made a new account, it took like three minutes, but here we go, another attempt. Okay, I'm actually gonna lose it. This minigame is literally 20 seconds long. I've lost my mind, my character has a daily allowance of one cent apparently because that's how much time I get to spend looking for Nessie. What's annoying is I don't really know exactly what I'm looking for. Like, yeah, the Loch Ness Monster, but like, is it just gonna appear? Or like it'll poke out a little bit? I don't know. Just character after character rebuying the packs each time and getting such a small window of time to find her. I tried this thing over and 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 over. I spent an hour of my night searching for this stupid Loch Ness monster. And just then, when all hope seemed lost, it was lost. I gave up. <laughs> I wanted to find it, but at this point I'm unsure how long that would take and it's certainly not worth finding out. I'm so sorry I let you all down. <sighs> Keep it together, Jake. Nessie bested me. Freak off, Nessie. You're not even real, I bet. The only cool thing in this quest is the Nessie hat you get for finding her, which I didn't, so literally nothing is stopping me from putting this in D. Alright, here's a little bonus content for you. Light from the Pop Chopper Good Discord found the percentage chance to actually come across Nessie. Anyone want to, you know, take a little stab at that number? If you think you're too low, you're probably wrong. 1% people. 1! I was set up to fail! Well, there's nothing I can do. Except hack the mainframe, baby! Let's just make that 0.01 to, uh, 100 and look at Nessie all we want. <laughs> we did it! We're geniuses! Nessie is real, I told you! I am so very relieved that I can say I did it. The hat doesn't work, but I don't care, it's over! And it's 2am. Anyways, it's still D tier, let's move on. Money Ladder was a demo for Game Show Island, so it was pretty cool to get a completely unique game other than just the ones we had. Except, something seems familiar. Trivia questions? About Pop Tropica? Something tells me this stuff is repurposed for the Brainiacs level. Either way, a parody of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire is cool, but if you copy your homework you can't get higher than a C in this university. It's not fair, I get stuck looking for Nessie for three hours, but I don't get to travel through multiple Pop Tropica Islands looking for ghosts. A2 Pop Tropica. Basically you play hot or cold with an EMF reader on five different islands to hunt down ghosts to return to Ghost Story Island. While the gameplay itself isn't mind blowing, it's pretty rare to have islands cross over like this. Besides, I'm a thousand times more intrigued by this than being an energy hog. With an epic final boss, this has got to be one of the best mini quests in the whole game. S tier. The preview for Virus Hunter Island had this little arcade minigame. I've been trying to remember what game it's most similar to, but the only thing I can think of is Asteroids. Let me know what this is really based off of. Either way, yeah, it's just a few waves of enemies and bosses to fight. I really am impressed that these somehow started off super high, then down to pretty lame, and have come back to having some actual substance to them. It's not S, but hey, it's not bad. A tier. So that really should be the end of the list. I don't really know why the wiki classifies these next few standalone games as mini quests. I'll include them for the sake of completion, but just keep that in mind while we rank them. I've seen Pop Tropical Realms be compared to Terraria. I don't think that's a fair comparison, but the similarities are pretty clear. Any game where you terraform a 2D plane is going to feel pretty similar. I also get a sense of No Man's Sky for some reason. Maybe just traversing these desolate, boring wastelands has something to do with it. Almost every clip I've seen of this is just people aimlessly digging and walking, although there are some fun parts like encountering creatures and breaking into innocent people's homes. <laughs> I think if you love Pop Chopka and Terraria then you might have some fun with this, but seriously, it'd be weird not to just play Terraria at that point. I have not played this myself, so don't take this too seriously, but from what I've seen, I hate it. D tier. Thankfully I had the DS game. Actually hold on, I have the DS game. Now I'm not going to just show you poorly recorded clips of me playing it on my DS, but I did actually try this again just to fairly rank it here. 
I think the right call for a DS game that features three islands would be to make three new ones that might fit a theme, or you know, or just something to help differentiate it from the original game. Well, that would be nice, but Ubisoft, yep, let me say that again, Ubisoft decided to play the greatest hits and bundle worst versions of Astronauts, Superpower, and Mythology Island together. These are some of my favorite islands, but again, they aren't new and are actually made worse. Most puzzles and minigames have changed to fit the DS a bit better, but each one is much shorter, much less enjoyable, and, well, on a DS. For example, you have to get to space by playing this minigame. Go, 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 go. <laughs> you lose. You lose. You lose. Not me. No. And in Mythology Island, you have to cross the river by playing this minigame. You're joking. <laughs> it's the same minigame. No, no, no. No, there's more. No. Go, please. No. Mazes are so hard. Was it worth it? Whoa. Awesome PNG, dude. <laughs> and it's over. The sad thing is you could play the actual game for free, but the DS game costs money. There's some poor kid out there who never played the actual Pop Tropica, but got this from Christmas from their 110 year old grandma. It's a bad game, Grandma! Should have tried harder in finding a good gift. Looks like you're gonna have to find a new nursing home, too! Get out! D tier! And don't even think about having a funeral, old hag! Apparently, the creators of Pop Tropica were attempting to tell the future when they named this one the Forgotten Islands. Maybe Forgettable Islands would have been even closer to the truth. Somehow, they let Ubisoft back in here to make a spiritual successor to the first game. This one was actually available on the 3DS and mobile, so you know this is gonna be good. What's completely unfair is that this one had unique islands. Why do I keep getting screwed here? Pop Tropica freaking claps me and then turns around and goes for seconds. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Pop Tropica freaking claps me and then turns around and goes for seconds. It would have been pretty funny if this game had actual forgotten islands like Galactic Hot Dogs or Snaggle Mast or something. Anyways, yes, they learned their lesson and made new islands called Toe Island, Giant Island, and Mystic Island. Besides these coincidentally being my top three fetishes, they all seem to look pretty at Oh my god, what is wrong with me? Besides these coincidentally being my top three fetishes, they all seem to look pretty identical. There isn't a ton of gameplay I could find, which sucks, but this one guy on the wiki said, Don't buy it, it's a rip of I completed the game in one day and after that there was nothing to do. Nothing Eleven. Fair enough. A nice D tier to round out the list. Dipping our toes back into Pop Tropica was pretty fun. It started off really exciting, despite pretty much immediately becoming trash. The title, Mini Quest, is so strange because almost none of them have a similar length or formula. It went from mini islands to mini games to mini demos, and it's hard to say which was the best option. Having a little incentive to get excited about islands that were coming soon is really smart, but at the same time, I want nothing more than to have a bunch of mini quests like Haunted House. It would have made for fun little bonuses to capture ideas that wouldn't work fully as an island. Still though, a lot of these were fun enough, and they kind of just died once a new version of Pop Tropica released with Virus Hunter Island. In short, mini quests will never compare to a full island, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't enjoy myself here. Plus, I got the epic Nessie Hunt story I get to tell my grandkids about. Just don't ever play the DS games. Trust me, if you like fun, then you're making the right choice. In a way, this video was a test. Are people still excited to reminisce about Pop Tropica? If the answer is yes, then good news! I'm excited to try the bonus quests that we skipped over in our island rankings. They were basically an initial part of the story from each island that was available to members only. If you guys are still up for it, I say we gotta play those too. Let me know if you'd want to see it. Want to talk about Pop Chopka with others in my community? Join my Discord! Hey PETA, remember the time we were in Pop Tropica? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Hey PETA, remember the time we were in Pop Tropica? Oh yeah, that was friggin' sweet. <laughs>
Oh yeah, that was friggin' sweet, Lois. Thank you to my members, Groth One Finger, Cobalt Chrome E, and <gasps> Nani? Patrick Bayajon? The list just keeps growing. If you'd like to directly support me and my channel, please consider becoming a member. I'll even give you a little shout out at the end of my videos. Ooh. Uh, anyways, that's it. Leave! There's some poor kid out there who never played the actual Pop Tropica, but they. There's some poor kid out there who never actually played the Pop Tropica. Don't buy it, it's a rip of. Oh, sorry. Don't buy it, it's a rip of. I completely the game in one day and. Don't buy it, it's a rip of. I completely the. Something tells me this stuff was.